The quest begins this August on TBS. The following is an exclusive presentation of Turner Sports. The Atlanta Braves got this important series with the Montreal Expos off to a quick start yesterday using the long ball to set the tone and give Steve Avery enough support to shut down the Expos. Tonight the task gets tougher for Montreal as Greg Maddox goes for his fourth straight victory. With a four-game lead over the Montreal Expos, tonight the Atlanta Braves meet Montreal in game two of a three-game series. Hi, everybody. Pete Van Weren welcoming you to Olympic Stadium in Montreal, where the big news today, the announcement of the All-Star teams. The ballot winners were announced yesterday. Today, it was the pitching staff and the reserves who were picked by their managers. And for Bobby Cox, he'll be surrounded by a lot of familiar faces. Fred McGriff was voted in his fourth All-Star appearance. Chipper Jones will be going to his first game. John Smoltz, his fourth. Greg Maddox, his fifth. Tom Glavitt, his fourth. And and the fourth Atlanta pitcher, Mark Wollers, gets to go to an All-Star game for the first time. And of all the players picked off the Atlanta Braves roster, perhaps the biggest achievement belongs to Chipper Jones, an All-Star in just his second full Major League season. He's down on the field now with Don Sutton. All right, Pete, thank you very much. Well, Chipper, you got anything exciting planned for next week? <laughs> well, yeah, I'm going to the All-Star game. It's a, it's a really happy time for, for the six guys uh, off our ball club that were selected. So I'm just going to go up there and have fun for three days. You've only been in the big leagues now less than two years. Is there a, a great sense of reward for having accomplished this in such a short time? Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a great honor to, to be selected uh, as one of the elite in the National League. Uh, I've experienced a lot of success in a short time in my brief Major League career. Uh, obviously, winning the World Championship is, is uh, every player's number one goal, but certainly an all-star selection is a close second. Are you a goal setter, and is this one of the things you wanted to accomplish, maybe uh, before your career was over? Well, I try to stay away from from actual numbers goals, um, but certainly uh, world championships and all-star uh, teams, uh, you know, they keep adding up, and, and hopefully this won't be my last. It's certainly been a goal of mine. It's, we were talking about the short time you've been in the big leagues, but two years ago you were riding bicycles and lifting weights. This had to be one of the furthest things from your mind. Well, it seemed really far away uh, just a couple years ago. I mean, having uh, a major knee injury and, and uh, uh, potentially threatening my career uh, it made me sit back and think and wonder if this day would ever come, and I just thank God that it finally has. Well, enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. I will. Thank you. All right, we're going to come back to Olympic Stadium, get game two of the series underway after we take a break. Atlanta Braves Baseball, brought to you by Beachwood Aged Budweiser, official sponsor of the 1996 U.S. Olympic team. For a clean, crisp taste you won't find in any other beer, this Bud's for you. And by Delta Airlines, the official airline of the 1996 Olympic Games. Get the most out of this IndyCar, Patrick Racing put Scott Pruitt behind the wheel. They built a team that could get it in and out of the pits in the blink of an eye. And they chose a battery they can depend on to get it started. The Duralast battery from AutoZone. The same Duralast you can depend on to start your car. So don't settle for anything less. The Duralast battery. Power you can depend on. sandwich with thick slices of delicious grilled Texas toast, you have two choices. A new Texas toast bacon cheeseburger and a Texas toast breakfast sandwich. And if you want to find them, you have only one choice. Hardee's. Are you going to eat the pickle? There's this college team I practice with to stay in shape. 
Each one is out to prove that they can hit the Rhine Express. I'm out to prove they can't. After a day of fastballs, it's Advil for me. Nothing has shown me that it works better or lasts longer than Advil. For sore muscles, more doctors recommend Advil than any other pain reliever. I love that sound. Advil, advanced medicine for pain. Another good crowd gathering here tonight at Olympic Stadium as we get set for game two of the series. Time for our starting lineup brought to you by Manny Mo and Jack the Pep Boy. For the brace, Marquise Grissom will lead it off. Mark Lipke in the two spot, Chipper Jones to hit third. Fred McGriff with the cleanup hitter. Ryan Klesko with bat five. Jermaine Dye will follow Klesko. Eddie Perez catches, he will hit seventh. The shortstop and batting eighth is Jeff Blauser. And Greg Maddox will complete the batting order for Bobby Cox. The Expos will send this defense to the turf. Rodriguez in left, Floyd in center, Alou in right. Segui at first, Lansing second. Grizzolanic is the shortstop. And Shane Andrews over at third. Darren Fletcher, the left-handed hitter catcher, will be behind the plate and on the mound, making his 17th start of the year. He does have one complete game, a 3-5 and five record, Real Cormier. He's allowed six home runs, the league hitting 277 against him. A fastball, a tailing fastball, a curveball, a changeup, and a split finger. So he, like uh, some pitchers in the National League, use two off-speed pitches. He throws a pretty hard split finger. If it's working, it it really dives down and away. He would much rather play a night game, and if you check that column on the right, that pretty much sums it up there. In the five-day games, he's yet to win, and he's giving up a touchdown a game, but he knocks five points off his ERA when he goes out there at night. Umpiring crews, they move up 90 feet. Here's how they will line up for game two of the series. That's Paul Nauert. He'll be calling the balls and strikes. Greg Bonet at first. Frank Pulley, lively Frank Pulley down at second, and Larry Poncino over at third. Good crowd here yesterday and a, a very exciting win for the Braves. The Braves who had struggled down in Florida getting in here in the wee hours and coming out uh, served early warning they were going to handle the Expos. Four runs second inning and then all of a sudden bingo Steve Avery made it stand up along with some help from McMichael and Wohlers. Marquise Grissom, Pete, I think that uh, if he could do this well against every book club he's traded from, he'd like to go through 13 trades. He has worn out the expo. It's been absolutely amazing. He had another hit a home run against them yesterday. He's now hitting 520 lifetime against Montreal. 26 out of 50 with two homers since the trade. Cormier's first pitch of the night at called strike in the inside corner. We are underway from Olympic Stadium. Here's the 0-1 on the way, and he lines one foul up into the seats off to the right, nothing in two. Got to be a thrill for Cormier pitching in the big leagues for Montreal. He is a Navy son from Canada. Originally with the Cardinals, then through Boston, along with Mark Whitney went to Boston and came here in a deal that sent Will Cordero to the Sox. Misses outside, one ball, two strikes. Lemke will follow, then Chipper Jones. Here's the one two on the way. Grissom just got a piece of that one. Still a ball and two strikes. Cormier's best year was with the Cardinals back in 92. He has had a 10 game victory season that year. He was 10 and 10 with a 368 and run average. Looked like at that point he was on the way to becoming a solid starter with St. Louis. And he had some arm troubles set him back some. High in the air foul. Back out of play by Grissom. Still a ball and two strikes on Marquise. Cormier, a native of New Brunswick. Here's the one two now to Grissom and he struck him out ball dropped by Fletcher he'll have to throw him out down to first one gone. So a good start tonight for Montreal as Cormier fans Marquise Grissom to get the game underway and that'll bring up Mark Lemke. First breaking ball that he threw him. Bounced it right on top of the plate that's a good spot to put a two strike pitch. Look at the thing go down right on top of the plate after looking at fastballs and change ups hard to lay off one. Here's Lemke hitting 284 with four homers hitless in the game yesterday.
Cormier's first delivery and it's bounced over his glove. The shortstop Grizzolanic up and over to first. Got him. Looked like Cormier might have a play on that. When he didn't, Grizzolanic had to really hurry to get Lemke by a half a step at first. Two down. Most of the time when a ball comes back up the middle like this, Pete, if you're the pitcher, you're better off leaving it alone. you got better chance of having one of your infielders. But instincts take over, and he just tipped it just enough to slow it down. Good off-balance play by Grizzolanic. And Lemke made this close by hustling and not jumping at the bag. You notice how he kept his normal stride? You jump, you lose speed. Guys who get there quicker are the ones that run straight through the bag, not to the bag. And now Chipper Jones, one of six Braves selected for the National League All-Star team today. Very excited about it. He and Mark Wooler's both going for the first time, and that's always a great thrill. It's a thrill to be selected any year, no matter how many times you've gone, but that first one is the one that you never forget. And I hear guys say occasionally, well, I, you know, I like the days off. That's a bunch of bull. <laughs> if you get a chance to go to an All-Star game, there isn't a human being in his right mind who has a pulse that doesn't want to go there and be a part of it. It is exciting. It's, it's a chance to spend two days with people you try to beat all year. You're listed among the elite, the festivities, the game itself. If you don't get goosebumps, check the obits. You're in them. And the moment that you would like to be walking right behind Chipper Jones is the moment that he walks into that all-star clubhouse and just looks around at all those names on the lockers. That's when it really hits you as to what you've accomplished. Moises Alou out in right field makes the catch. A 1-2-3 start for Real Cormier. Braves go in order in the top half of the first inning. No score from Montreal. If you're sick or injured, Major Medical doesn't cover lots of things that touch your family. What they do, what they need, how they get from place to place. Aflac can help. Use Aflac benefits to fill the gaps other insurance doesn't cover. You decide exactly how to use it best. Then, concentrate on what's really important. Just get better. Steve Young here. You know, crispy Wheaties and Raisins has plump raisins, sweet flakes, and an incredible crunch. I love the crunch! Linebackers. Come crunch time, there's only one. Crispy Wheaties and Raisins. Bex, the original import. Taste German beer at its finest. Bex. America's favorite German beer. They're the NBA's best. Shaq, Pippen, Hill, Hardaway. Preparing to take on the world. America's dream team faces China. Wednesday, July 10th at 8, only on TNT. Start with the global resources of CNN, add the style and savvy of Sports Illustrated, and you get what the Associated Press calls a blockbuster. CNN SI, the 24-hour sports news network. One, two, three inning for the Braves. Now it's the Expos' turn. Quickly, let's run through their starting lineup. Grizzolanic to lead it off, Lansing in the two spot, Henry Rodriguez third. Alou, Fletcher, and Segui make up the heart of the lineup. Floyd, Andrews, and Cormier completed defensively. Die, Grissom and Klusko right to left. McGriff, Limke, Blauser, and Jones first to third. Eddie Perez behind the plate. And on the mound, start number 19. He has won three in a row. He has been exceptional. His last three starts, eight and five, a 283. The league hitting 239 against Greg Maddox. And facing fellow All-Star Mark Grizzolanic to lead things off. And there's a strike in the outside corner. Grizzolanic 322. He's in a little bit of a skid right now. Just one for his last 18. He got that hit in the game yesterday. Rounds this one by Fred McGriff in the right field for a base hit. A leadoff single now. Jermaine Dye throwing back to Greg Maddox at the bag at first. Nearly got Mark Grizzolanic. How's that for a heads-up play both by Maddox and Dye? Maddox does this a lot. The, the fun thing to watch is the youngster in right field having the game in front of him and keeping a chance at getting it out in front of him. Off the end of the bat by McGriff. Maddox always heads to the side. Comes up, takes a look, turns towards second. This is close. You never find Greg Maddox standing around sightseeing when the ball is in play. And you got to tip your hat to Jermaine Dye. It's such a routine play that an outfielder normally makes to pick up a ball like that and immediately get it back to second base. 
But he picked up on Greg Maddox's location immediately and nearly got the runner returning to the bag. Now Mike Lansing stepping in and taking a strike. Lansing having a good year. 310 with five homers, 28 RBIs. It's a good hit and run man, too. And when you're going against the Braves, you'll see a lot of ball clubs try to strike early, do something different. Maybe create a little uh, havoc on the base pass, and we've seen Philippe Alou do it more than once against the Braves. Nobody out. Grits Atlantic at first. He has 15 stolen bases this year. That leads the Expos. He is going on the pitch. Ground ball right side. Lemke stayed home, and the ball was hit right to him. Over to first in time. Grits Atlantic winds up at second base. One out. Good defense by the Braves. You know Lansing wants to go the other way with the guy on the move. They left Lemke at home, had Blouser covered. If Lemke had covered, then the Expos would have him at the corners. It still accomplished what they wanted. They moved up Grizzlanic 90 feet. I guess I should say it accomplished part of what they wanted. Now the left fielder, Henry Rodriguez, 293, 25 homers and 69 RBIs. He is one of the many players in both the National and American League with all-star credentials that got squeezed out of an all-star berth this year and it's back up the middle off Maddox again rolling into foul territory Perez runs it down looks the runner back to third let's see if Maddox is all right he got nailed his last start on a ball hit back up the middle and after seven innings came out of the game now let's see where this one got him he looks like he's all right but Jeff Porter on his way out along with Bobby Cox to see Inside out off the left shin. And Maddox has got to quit wearing the uniform with the bullseye on it. He's worn that his last two ball games, and he's taken some pretty good shots. And both times, Pete, I think he's been fortunate. Take a look at this last week. He's fortunate he didn't get a kneecap here. He is fortunate he didn't get a shin bone last week on the inside of the right thigh. And the amazing thing, he makes this play. And we've seen it happen to him. It's not just this year. It's every year. He has so many balls that are hit right back at him that either are fielded by him or by his second baseman or shortstop. And he gets more than his share of those that glance off a leg or an arm or a shoulder. But he indicated to Jeff Porter he's all right. He has runners, though, at first and third with one down, and Moises Alou, the hitter. I'll tell you about Greg Maddox. Unless there was a bone sticking through, he would indicate to Jeff Porter that he's all right. Alou batting 256, 11 homers, and 49 runs driven in. First and third, one down. We'll talk about the all-star selections as we go along here. We mentioned briefly about Henry Rodriguez second in the league in home runs not making the team well, you can't pick everybody and there are always going to be players who have credentials to go to the game who can't be picked because you've got to pick a player from every team number one see if anybody has a play on this ball in foul territory they don't and the count on the blue 0 and one but you only have 28 spots eight of them are voted on by the fans so you only got 20 spots to fill and you have to make sure each team is represented by one player to make the selection process a very political hot kick. You know you're going to make some unpopular choices. You know you're going to make some surprising choices. Players who didn't expect to go to the All-Star game who will be. And there was a lot of speculation that Rodriguez was a cinch. In fact, he was third in the balloting until the last day of the balloting when Dante Bichette nosed him out. Sometimes for a guy like Rodriguez, too, that is a real shot in the arm for the second half of the season. In the right field, base hit a loop. And the Montreal Expos going the other way on Greg Maddox, take a 1 0 lead. A driving in his 50th run of the year. You said something very key there, going the other way. They're not trying to pull Greg Maddox at all. That was a definite inside out, hit it to right field swing. Watch his momentum go towards second. The back foot slid out a little bit. He was definitely trying to hit that to the right side. Third hit of the inning off Maddox. And the batter will be Darren Fletcher, the catcher, hitting 269 with seven homers. And 39 runs driven in. A red hot hitter of late 16 for his last 30.
So the Expos already on the board here in the bottom half of the first inning on three first inning hits. Remember, Greg Maddox had only given up one run in his last three starts. Ball one low to Fletcher. One man out. And that catches the outside corner. One ball, one strike now on Fletcher. The league hitting 239 against Maddox. Pretty even. Right-handers are hitting 230, 244. Lefties 234. It's a changeup that makes that 10-point difference against the lefties. Now the 1-1 one, one on the way, and it's brick foul down the right side up into the crowd. A ball and two strikes on Fletcher. Do you get the feeling the Expos are going up there today picking out a spot that they're going to want the ball in, and if they don't get it there, they're going to take it. If they get it there, I be, uh, they're like Alou was looking for something away to hit the right field. I so, think was so was Grizzlanik leading off the game. And Lansing was too. I think Fletcher here is looking for something inside. He's seen the fastball in on the hands and cut away from him. If Maddox can make the change up or the pitch away, he's letting him have it. Maddox he's ahead in the count now, one and two. And the one-two on the way. And it is a third strike swinging. I didn't know whether he had foul tipped that ball initially or not when it popped out of Perez's glove, but apparently he didn't. It's a strikeout for Maddox, and that's out number two here in the bottom half of the first. I think Maddox and Perez talked about location when they came out because if you see, Eddie Perez has set up inside on Fletcher. It might be that the runner at second was tipping location. He set up inside right under him, and then Maddox went to the change up away. So if they're trying to relay location from the runner at second, that's a good way to foul them up. Two gone. That'll bring up David Segee, the first baseman, hitting 284 with five homers. Into the crowd, 0-1. Montreal four games back of Atlanta now. Both managers trying to downplay the importance of this series, saying it's way too early in the year to call it a big series, but both managers understand the significance of each and every one of these games. A two-game swing. You win one, you pick up a game on the team that you're trying to beat out for the division crown. One ball, one strike. Two men out, one run in for the Expos here in the bottom half of the first inning. The 1-1 one -one delivery is fouled off by Segui. It's a ball and two strikes now. There are your runners. Alou at first, Rodriguez down at second. Funny swing by Sagi. He got a piece of it, though. I don't know how. He was, remains one and two. He was a keeper of the wicket there. <laughs> the bowler tossed him one down low. Did you buy a used car from that pretzel vendor? I have nothing to say. I, 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 can't, I can't think of a single word to describe. Neither could I, and I should have kept it that way. <laughs> Here's the one-two on the way. Soft roller out toward short. Blouser will go on to first. High throw. McGriff pulled off the bag. Everybody's safe. You may wonder why Blouser just didn't go to second. Well, Alou, with runners at first and second, had such a big lead over at first that it would have been a bang-bang play at second base. That ball was not hit that sharply. So Blouser decided to go ahead and throw on to first, and he threw high. He may have had a little more time than he thought. See, he side-wheeled that, and it took off. He had a full two steps to play with there on Segui. Here's the throw from the side, and see it sail just like a Frisbee. 
before McGriff could get back down, Sagi had made it. And now Cliff Floyd will bat. He takes inside ball one. Floyd out in center field for the Expos tonight, hitting 259, two homers, eight RBIs. His second home run of the year was a three run pinch hit homer that beat the Phillies on Sunday. Bases loaded, two outs. Good change up. One ball, one strike. That was the 20th error of the year for Jeff Blauser. Now the 1-1. One, one. Missing inside. 2-1 the count on Floyd. away from Perez but not far enough for the runners to move up the count even two and two Henry Rodriguez at third Moises Alou at second and David Saki over at first now bases loaded the Expos are no strangers to this situation and Pete they have come through with some glam slams two four six that's seven Including two by Sagi, Fletcher, and Andrews. And notice that the Andrews, Fletcher, and Sagi Grand Slams all came in April. That's all for Floyd. He's out of there on strikes. Maddox leaves the bases loaded. The error does not hurt, but the three hits do. One run is in. It's 1 0 Montreal. Atlanta Braves Baseball, brought to you by Hardy. Come in and try the new Texas Toast Bacon Cheeseburger only at Hardy's. Split it with you? If you want a sandwich with thick slices of delicious grilled Texas toast, you have two choices. A new Texas Toast Bacon Cheeseburger and a Texas Toast Breakfast Sandwich. And if you want to find them, you have only one choice. Hardee's. Are you going to eat the pickle? There are sure to be a few records set during the 1996 Olympic Games. And as the official airline, Delta has already set one. We're the first U.S. airline to fly completely smoke-free worldwide to more places than any other airline. It's not something we did to win a gold medal. We did it so you could breathe a little easier. Delta Airlines. There's a place where UV rays beat down so mercilessly they're nearly twice as intense as the sun's. No, it's not some blazing spot in the equator. It's the Dutch Boy Paint Testing Facility, where we test our exterior house paints to make sure they resist fading, blistering, and peeling. It's one of over 75 tests we do to make sure that when you buy Dutch Boy, you're not just getting a paint that looks beautiful, you're getting a paint that lasts. We guarantee it. Give your home the lasting look of Dutch Boy. A little free advertising. This telecast is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the Atlanta National League Baseball Club and is intended solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, retransmission of the pictures or descriptions of this game without the express written consent of the Atlanta National League Baseball Club is prohibited. Fred McGriff leads off here in the top of the second, right at 300, 19 homers and 64 runs driven in. Takes ball one from Cormier. McGriff voted as the starting National League All-Star first baseman. Very close balloting. He just nosed out Jeff Bagwell of Houston Andres Galarraga. Finished a strong third. Up and in 2-0. Oh. In case you wonder where some of the other Braves finished. Javi Lopez, number two among catchers. Mark Lemke was fourth among second baseman. Jeff Blauser, fifth among shortstops. Chipper Jones, third among third baseman. David Justice, fourth. Ryan Klesko, sixth. Marquise Grissom, 14th among outfielders. Two and one, the count on Fred McGriff. You're looking for a place to find some injustice, run through the list of first basemen. Yeah, that's There's some guys having some great year. That is low in the count, three and one. They can only take two. They took McGriff, who won the balloting, and Jeff Bagwell. You've got Galarraga, Wally Joyner, 
Mark Grace hitting over 300. David Segui here having a good year. How about the year John Mabry's John having? John Mabry with the Cardinals. On the ground is Segui. He'll flip to Cormier. One down. Four in a row set down now by Real Cormier. How about the year Greg Colburn's having with the Florida exactly. Marlins? 21 game hitting streak, hitting over 300. Each ball club has to have one player, and because it is his last year and he is retiring at the end of the year, the National League felt compelled to invite Ozzie Smith, and uh, that probably cost John Mabry a spot on the All-Star team. So you can't please everybody. You said it early on. It is impossible to take everybody that deserves to go. There's a player with All-Star numbers. Ryan Klesko, 296, 22 homers, 52 RBIs. His number is very close to those of Henry Rodriguez. But he'll have to wait for another year to pitch outside. I know we're not going to beat this to death tonight, but it is relevant and pertinent and timely. But something's going to have to be done when they add two more ball clubs, too. The, the, the roster is going to have to be expanded. Either the roster is expanded, or I, I know it's, it's in the good interest of baseball to have a representative from every team, but there are some years when some teams simply don't have a player who is having an all star type year. Well, you take away the the name of the game. All star is supposed to be the best in the business, not necessarily the only one from your city or from your team. I never have thought that was in the best interest of baseball. Here's the one two on the way to Klesko. Struck him out, got it over the outside corner. And Cormier has been sharp. He's retired five straight. And the batter will be Jermaine Dye. Well, it's continuing a trend he brought with him out of the month of June. He was only one and two, but his earned run average two nine. And he's showing the Braves four exceptional pitches, two fastballs, one that he tails away, and that shades of Tom Glavin and as he painted the inside corner or the outside corner with it. Jermaine Dye, one of the heroes yesterday, now at 325 for the year with five home runs, and he fouls back the first pitch 0 and 1. How about the compliment Marquise Grissom paid him today? Yeah, he put he, him in he, some good company. He said he might become the next Dave Winfield. That's pretty strong company for a youngster that's been in the big leagues a little over a month. And that man right there doesn't throw around a whole lot of no, company. No, he doesn't. He's a very quiet guy. That's like getting the good housekeeping seal of approval. One ball, one strike, and die. Still hasn't walked in 77 major league at bats. The 1 1 is a breaking ball low and inside almost hit him. Count goes to 2 and 1. Expos leading it 1 0. We're in the top half of inning two. Three and one on Jermaine Dye. This might be a first. I'll bet you if he throws that same pitch, Jermaine Dye will hit it. Put it in play. The three one on the way. And there is the first walk of Jermaine Dye's major league career. And he did throw the same pitch, and Jermaine Dye laid off of a close, close pitch to get ball four. Comes in his 78th big league plate appearance. Look at this pitch. This is close. Two gone for Eddie Perez with Dye now at first. Perez at 323 homers, nine RBIs. Drills this one down the left field line. Foul up into the seats. Nothing in one. Back to first, Jermaine Die. Cormier looks like his motion. He's a pretty good one. He doesn't have much of a different kick when he goes to first or when he comes home. Doesn't tip off where he's going. Right back to the pitcher. 
Cormier throws out Perez, and that's all for Atlanta in the second. The walk is all the Braves get. We go to the bottom half of inning two. Montreal still leads it, one nothing. How far can you go on $199? Well, come to Pep Boys and you can go 80,000 miles. Because right now, you can get four of our 80,000-mile tires for just $199. That's a full set for under 200 bucks. Oh, the roads you'll travel, the sights you'll see, the money you'll save. You can even charge them on your Pep Boys credit card. That's $199 for any size, any four of our 80,000-mile tires in stock. Pep Boys, everything but gas. Disney's The Hunchback of Notre Dame is in theaters. Will today be the day you're ready to fly? And it looks like everybody's getting into the act with the puppets from Burger King. Don't thank me. Thank Quasimodo. Your kids can collect all four, only $1.99 each, with any value meal. The Hunchback of Notre Dame Puppets, only at Burger King. Men, is gray hair sneaking up on you, right under your nose, making you look too old? Whoa, it is sneaking up on me. Up here, too. You need Just for Men gel, made for the hard-to-color gray of mustaches and sideburns. Simply brush in this no-drip gel, and in five minutes, rinse. Gray's gone. Your mustache and sideburns blend perfectly with your natural hair color. That gray won't sneak up on me again. Just for Men gel, the sure thing for a natural look. Let's take a look at the Hardys leaderboard. Our category tonight, National League doubles leaders and the Rockies and the Expos hogging for the top five spots. Lansing atop with 27, Rodriguez with 24. Steve Finley completes the five. And at the top of baseball in that category, Edgar Martinez of the Seattle Mariners, who at the halfway point of the season has 39 doubles on a pace to hit 78, which would break the major league record by 11. Mike Lansing on a pace to... Hit 54 this year, halfway through the year with 27. Shane Andrews going the other way. Little looping fly ball, late jump by Jermaine Dye. Didn't pick the ball up right away. And it cost him. Base hit for Shane Andrews. And that'll bring up the pitcher, Real Cormier. And once he didn't pick it up right away, Pete, he was smart. You could have very easily played that into a triple if he had come charging in and tried to make the catch, but that first step back cost him the opportunity to make it. Cormier up in a bunt situation. He has five sacrifices this year. Chipper Jones in at third. McGriff will be charging from first. Cormier squares, gets the bunt down right to McGriff. He'll throw him out rather than play any games with Cormier. Why do that, you may ask? Well, you could get so caught up in trying to tiptoe back and forth at one another that the runner can go all the way around a third if you're not careful. One away, runner second. The batter will be Mark Rizzolani. Got a base hit to right to lead off the bottom of the first. Came around to score. The game's only run. Ball no strikes. Fouls this one away. One and one the count. Chris Alani showing you a little bit of a different plan this time up than the first time. He was trying to go the other way. That time he was trying to pull. Pickoff play on at second as Lemke charges in. Getting back safely, Shane Andrews. So much like Greg Maddox has five or six antenna out there. Because a lot of pitchers get locked into getting hitters out and miss out on opportunities just like Limke presented him with. Off the end of the bat to the right side, McGriff will feel. Maddox covers. In time to get Grizzlanek moving over to third. Shane Andrews, two down now, the runner at third. And the batter will be Mike Lansing, who grounded out to second his first time up.
Maddox will continue to work from the stretch with the runner at third. Oh, and one on Lansing. 51 times this year, Pete Maddox has faced hitters with two outs and runners in scoring position. And he has really made some clutch pitches. The opposition only six out of 51. They're hitting less than 120 in this situation. Andrews is the runner. And it's nothing in two now on Lansing. Lansing just two for 17 in his career against Greg Maddox. saw Greg Maddox take about four steps toward the Atlanta dugout thinking he had struck out Lansing and he doesn't do that Eddie Perez sits there and frames it holds it for a little extra look Maddox is not one who would ever show up an umpire and that wasn't the, the, what he wanted to do there back up the middle Blouser can't get it base hit for Lansing in to score Shane Andrews So after thinking he had Mike Lansing struck out the one two pitch a little high bouncing ball up the middle that Maddox couldn't reach nor could Blouser. Watch this pitch it's identical to the one that he didn't get the call on and the first thing Greg Maddox did after that sneaked into center field was sneak a peek back at Paul Nard. So it's now a two nothing Montreal lead with Lansing at first his 29th RBI of the year and Henry Rodriguez the hitter Rodriguez single in the first inning. Get a shot right back off Greg Maddox. Lansing with 11 stolen bases this year. He's been caught five times. A ball and no strikes on Rodriguez. Out the corner, one and one. Rodriguez not too thrilled about that call. Well, take a look. It's the change up, down and away, with movement. He might have had a reason to sneak a peek back at Paul Howard. Over to first again, Lansing back safely. Speaking of sneaking a peek, a couple of times earlier this year, Henry Rodriguez was caught sneaking a peek back at the catcher and thus far I've been kind of keeping an eye on him tonight and he hasn't uh, he hasn't tried it I'm sure somebody I'm sure he saw the replays runner going and fighting that one off Rodriguez fouls it back one and two he had a good jump too might have hurt his back one foot on the turf he does get a good jump let's see if we can see anything Oh, he tried to slam on brakes and slide. Looked like he jammed his lower back. He jammed his hip. Once you commit the slide, Pete, you're better off sliding, even if there you is see no more play. players get hurt that way. One, two pitches high, two and two. We saw Pedro Guerrero tear up a knee in the final day of spring training at Vero Beach when the Braves and Dodgers were playing. Zach. Changing his mind midstream while going into third. They have washing machines and dryers. The only thing that will get damaged if you go ahead and slide normally is the uniform. Here's the 2-2. They pitch out on the 2-2 pitch. Runner was not going. Count full 3-2, and two, but it shows you how much confidence Eddie Perez has in Greg Maddox's control. Probably shows you how much confidence Jimmy Williams or Bobby Cox has in it because most of that comes from the dugout, and there aren't many pitchers in baseball. You could take the 3-2 with a left-handed power hitter up there and not worry. Runner going on the 3 2 pitch. He strikes out Rodriguez. That is strikeout number two for Greg Maddox. But once again, the Montreal Expos put a run on the board. A couple of hits. They leave one. It's 2 0 Montreal after two. Finding oneself alone in this world can be terrifying. Poor thing, you must have fallen out. 
I knew I must return him to his family to ensure he's consumed at optimum freshness. I don't see him, do you? Excuse me, he's lost. Lost beer coming through. See him? We'll find him any minute. I can feel it. Excuse me. Don't give up. Hey, who's missing a bottle? We got a lost bottle here. Budweiser. Brewery fresh taste. Strictly enforced. Don't worry, little fella. We'll fight him. People are much more satisfied than they have been in the past. Now with quality care standards, we have some guidelines to follow. This is what the customers want. They want to have their appointment within a day. They want to have their car fixed right the first time. This is them speaking. Anything we can do to make it better. It's not just meeting the standards that people are setting for us, but exceeding them. Something we're doing is working. <laughs> quality care people, quality care standards at your Ford and Lincoln Mercury dealer. 96 Atlanta. What better place to ask people about the taste of Wheaties, the breakfast of champions? It's got that good whole wheat flavor. It's <laughs> good. It's got a nice hearty thing to it. Toasty. And, uh, oh, it's good. Oh, man, this is great. You get something a lot more substantial out of Wheaties. A toasty flavor. If you think all cereals taste like you've never had Wheaties. I've had to go buy this. The championship taste of toasted whole wheat Wheaties. Better eat your Wheaties. Hey, that's my line. An old friend back with us for the second half of the season. Advil will be bringing you the scoreboard early in the ballgame. Here's what's uh, already completed or right now in progress. The Giants over Colorado uh, win. Philadelphia and New York early on in a close one. Chicago shutting out Pittsburgh a third of the way through it. Cincinnati and St. Louis just underway. Florida at Houston also just underway. And in the American League, Kansas City by one over Cleveland halfway through it. Uh, Milwaukee by one over Detroit. Ditto there halfway tied in Toronto. And there's the rest of the American League scores brought to you by your friends at Advil. We go to the top of the third. Braves down 2 nothing, and Jeff Blauser takes the ball low. Blauser 247 with 10 homers this year. If the Braves hitters do the same thing in the second half as they have done in the first half this season and tonight's game marks the beginning of the second half of the season for Atlanta Jeff Blauser would hit 20 homers this season Marquise Grissom would hit 22 homers this season Chipper Jones would hit 30 Fred McGriff 38 and Ryan Klesko 44 if they duplicate in the second half the home runs they hit in the first half Cormier falls behind 3 and 0 and what Jeff would like to do on the other side is he'd like to cut down on the airs. He'd gone 15 games without one. Now he has 20. That's the most he's ever made at shortstop, Pete. 19 is high coming into the tonight's game. Three and one the count. Andrews guns it across to first in time. That's a good first half. 21 games over 500 and in the top three. What we're not used to seeing from the Braves in the last couple of years are the numbers on the offense side. The batting average up to 275. The home run total there. 5.2 runs a game. It's fun to be a pitcher on a ball club that gives you five to play with. Now the pitcher Greg Maddox hits and takes a strike in the outside corner. Greg on the year is four out of 38, a 105 average. Two runs, five hits for Montreal. No runs or hits yet for Atlanta. A one pitch, breaking ball drops in there, nothing in two. with a fastball one ball two strikes that is a fair ball right out in front of home plate Fletcher on the first two down and first time through the Braves order, Real Cormier has been unhittable. He's only allowed one base runner, and that was a walk to Jermaine Dye. Now with two outs and the base is empty, Marquise Grissom, who struck out in the first inning, will step in. And only one ball hit to the outfield, a fly ball off the bat of Chipper Jones. So he is keeping it down in the strike zone, getting downward movement. 
Five ground ball outs and two strikeouts. Low and away to Marquise, ball one. You remember when AstroTurf was first put in, uh, everybody said a sinker baller cannot win on AstroTurf. Remember, that was the first thing they said. They wanted to, you've got to get guys who pitch up in the strike zone. Look at all the ground balls Real Cormier has been getting on the turf. Three outs on three infield grounders in the top of the third. We go to the bottom half. Still 2 nothing, Montreal. This year on TBS, July 4th is going to blow. It's the Big Bang. That's so. For two days, we're throwing ten big movies on the air just to watch them explode. <laughs> Top Gun, Roadhouse, Hudson Hawk, and many more. It's loud, dangerous fun. <laughs> what could be more all-American? The Big Bang, July 4th and 5th, all day, beginning 9.05 Eastern on TBS. Your car doesn't look, doesn't feel, doesn't smell brand new anymore. The thrill is gone. Get it back with new vinyl. New vinyl conditions, restores, and protects vinyl and leather. You get a protective finish and a showroom feel that's so real, you can smell it. Want it back? That new car feeling? It's yours with new vinyl. There's nothing like new vinyl. Available at Kmart, Walgreens, Pep Boys, Western Auto, Ace Hardware, True Value, and other leading stores. Announcing special savings on Armorall Waterproofing Sealer. Now for only $7.99 a gallon, you can protect the wood, brick, and concrete around your house. But hurry, this Armorall Waterproofing Sealer special is for a limited time only. Who painted it? A titan. He's a giant in his field. Yes, and he's scoring points with me. How'd they ever guess it was me? The private issue card painted by Patrick Ewing. Call 1-800-4PI-CARD and own an original. Montreal pecking away at Greg Maddox. Three hits producing a run in the first inning. Two more singles getting another one in the second. Now bottom of the third. Alou leads it off and takes the first one high. Ball one. Alou drove in the first inning run with a single. One ball, one strike. Is the outside corner one and two. Peter, another little bit of news about the All Star game. Apparently, the National League will be without Tony Gwynn. Fouled off, still one and two. AP just reporting. Joe Simpson just came over and told us. WSB radio called and let them know that he has uh, his foot's been put in a cast, slight Achilles tear. He'll be out for four weeks. So Tony perhaps the door is open for Henry Rodriguez after all. Very well be. Because they will name a replacement for Tony Gwynn if he is unable to perform, just like the American League had to do with Ken Griffey, who led all the outfielders with votes. But he's out of action, so that opened the door for Brady Anderson to become a starter. So we'll keep our ears open on that. We'll probably find out tomorrow. I'm sure Bobby Cox will be in touch with the National League office to name a replacement. Before tomorrow night's game, pitch is filed off. It's still one and two. Another strike out for Maddox. That's his fourth of the game. One gone here in the bottom half of the third. And it'll bring up Darren Fletcher, who was a strikeout victim in the first inning. Early in the count, was looking for something to pull. Still tried to pull on the changeup. Got the strikeout. Bouncing ball right side. Lemke runs it down on the first in time. Two quick outs here in the bottom of the third. Maddox trying for his first scoreless inning of the night. And David Seguin will be the batter he reached on the Blouser error in the first inning.
Tom Glavin talking about Greg Maddox yesterday saying he's the most amazing individual he's ever been around as a pitcher because he doesn't care about numbers about earned run average or wins or losses or strikeouts he just cares about making pitches. He is obsessed almost with making perfect pitches. It's a great way to teach somebody and not everybody has the personality or the ability to grasp that and buy that something so many times public pressure and peer pressure and the fact that uh, numbers are mentioned and one loss records are mentioned. Knocked down by Lemke but he won't have a chance to throw out Sagi. And that'll probably go as a base hit. It would have taken three perfect moves for Mark Lemke to throw him out. He would have been able to get had to get the glove on it, stop quick, plant, and make a perfect throw. And I'm not sure he could have done all three. It should be a base hit. And it will be. Hit number six off Maddox. Cliff Floyd is strikeout victim his first time up and he takes strike one on the outside corner but when you think about it Don pitchers are measured by wins and by earned run average and by strikeouts exactly and by lack of walks that's that's the measure of the pitcher but it's a measure he would not care about now the only thing you can control as a pitcher is whether or not you make the pitches you can't control whether a guy hits it at somebody a broken bat single you can't control a diving stop by your outfielder. Suppose your outfielder had a bad night the night before and he can't catch up. It. You can't control it once it leaves your hand. What happens to it after that. But if you can convince young pitchers or any pitchers that the only thing you can control is how you make the pitches. It sure does take a load off your mind and it really worked for him. It's 0 and 2 now on Cliff Floyd. Two men out a runner first. We're in the bottom of the third Expos leading at 2 nothing. This one will drift out of play into the box seats behind the Montreal or behind the Atlanta dugout. It's still 0 2. See, to, I would to, have to take it a step further. Don Leo Mazzoni said he, he believes that Greg Maddox enjoys side sessions as much as he does pitching in games because he's trying to locate pitches in certain areas and that if he does it, he's as happy after a, a good side session as he is after a good uh, outing against the team. See, I would have no problem if, one, if starting pitchers did not have one loss records because they're not a true measure of your effectiveness. You can if you get on a ball club scores a lot of runs you're going to win. You get on a ball club that doesn't score many runs. Ask Kevin Brown and Al Leiter down in Miami. They pitch well but are they known as good pitchers. No. Take the one loss records and throw them out. Give the team the one loss record. And if you want to measure a pitcher measure him on innings per start hits per innings or run average combine those things. But there really is no no reason for a starting pitcher to have a one loss record. You're going to have a hard time selling that one to baseball fans. Oh, I agree, but that's most of what we do is for baseball <laughs> fans and not for the players anyway. The 0 2 is high and away. Runner going. Throw to second base. Not in time. Stolen base for David Segui. That is his first of the year. He had been caught three times previously. Let's check his lead. It didn't look like he had that big of a lead. The foot is not out on the turf, but he had a running jump. Even had time to sneak a peek. Eddie Perez gets a lot on this throw, skips it there. But a perfect throw I don't think would have gotten Sagi with the jump he had. The one two strikes out Floyd again. Second time he's gone down swinging. That is strikeout number five for Greg Maddox. We've completed three at Olympic Stadium. Two nothing Montreal. Gillette presents a unique antiperspirant for men. Gillette Clear Gel Antiperspirant. Unlike a stick that can stay in your underarm hair, this is a soft gel. It goes cleanly through the hair, directly to the skin surface, to fight odor and wetness where they begin, for powerful all-day protection. And its clear formula leaves no white residue. Gillette Clear Gel Antiperspirant. Not home right now. We just got a new jet ski STS watercraft. We'll call back just as soon as we get home. The jet ski STS. It's got all the power, handling, and stability a family needs. It's your mother. How come you never call? 
Now at Universal Studios Hollywood, experience Waterworld, a live Sea War spectacular featuring Kawasaki Jet Ski Watercraft. scarier than a cheap fan. What a Hunter fan with its whisper-quiet motor and sturdy, wobble-free design is a sure sign of intelligent life. Let's give you tonight's half by trivia question before we go to the fourth inning, and here it is. Who holds the Expos record for the most hits by a shortstop in a single season? We'll have the answer for you in the bottom half of the inning. Well, so far, so good for Real Cormier. He hasn't allowed a run or a hit. And, and not, has issued only one walk. And not a bad start for Greg Maddox either. He's given up a couple of runs, but Maddox has held him to six hit. Carmier will face Lemke to lead it off here in the fourth inning. The first one is a strike 0 and 1. Lemke, Jones, and McGriff. I was thinking about this trip up to Montreal, and I see a lot of similarities in a trip that the Braves took in the identical date last year into Philadelphia. Check swing 0 and 2. Phillies were leading the Braves then. But I think the Braves went into Philadelphia, took three out of four and served notice that they were going to be reckoned with. Now, I think, coming in here, the shoe a little bit on the other foot. The Expos are chasing, but the Braves would like to come in and establish some territorial claims and, and leave here with a good trip, just like they did to Philadelphia. And it's ironic that it would be the identical date. One and two to Lemke. Lemke one out of 11 against the Expo lefty. Two and two. Very quietly having good offensive year. He's still in the 280s. He has eight doubles, four home runs, 20 RBIs. Not afraid to take a walk. He's walked 32 times. He's still hitting over 300 in the number two spot. On the ground, another ground ball out. Three of the last four outs. Plays made by Shane Andrews at third. And five consecutive ground ball outs thrown up there by Real Cormier. You know, your comment an inning ago about uh, the turf when it first came along, everybody thought it was going to be impossible to be a ground ball pitcher and be effective. The big fear was it was so fast that you wouldn't be able to get too many balls. But the upside of the turf is the true hops that you get. Exactly. Here's Chip. Even Chip. though it is a little quicker. Chipper Jones first time up the only out recorded in the outfield here a fly ball to right field. I'll bet you there are more double plays turned on turf too because it gets to the infielders. Yep. More quickly. Yeah he was really excited talking to him before we did the interview. Uh, in our open prior to the game about making the all star team. It's amazing. Here's a young man who's had a lot of success, but when you're around him, he's a mature kid, but you still get a lot of that gee whiz off shucks. Genuine. And he is genuinely excited about going to Philadelphia for the All-Star game. There's a strike for Chipper Jones, and it's two and one. And don't you agree that that first trip, that first walk into that All-Star clubhouse, when you look around and realize whose names you were being associated yes. with? I think that is one of the biggest things. I, you walk out on the field when you get a chance to go into the ball game. It's three and one to judge. Fortunately, I get a chance to go to an all-star game, and my first one was in Atlanta. And I remember walking out in the mound and saying, well, I'm going to be cool, calm, and collected. And turn around and look at who's playing behind you and promptly through the first warm-up pitch on the screen. In the air to left field, a long run, but Rodriguez is there. And Chipper Jones, the only hitter in the lineup, getting the ball in the air, but he's got an 0 for 2 to show for it. And Fred McGriff will bat with two gone in the fourth inning. But for two days you get to not try to get out the best or, or to try to beat the best. For two days you get to enjoy being on the field with the best in your league, the best in baseball and playing the best over on the other side. And it's I think if you if you take it back to your little league days, there's something special and fun about being an all-star. T ball all-star, I don't care. It's it's just nice to be a, a part of a group like that. Her ball strike to McGriff, it's 0-1.
Apparently the score has made a change. The official score. They're going to give Lemke an error. Ground ball through into right field. So Gee can't find it. And that's the first hit of the night. For the Atlanta Braves. That's a little bit unusual seeing a scoring change like that made a half an inning later. Usually it's in the home ballpark the reverse if an error was charged it's the home team calling up to the official score to kind of try to get a change to a hit not to have a hit taken away from one of the hometown players McGriff at first here's Klesko with two gone he struck out looking his first time one swing at the bat he can get it back even outside corner 0 and 1. Those are great first half numbers for Ryan Klesko. Throw in there 11 doubles. That's in going over the notes getting ready today for the ball game. The one jumped off the page at me that he only had 11 doubles. He and Javi Lopez not really many in the doubles column. But when you hit him over the fence you don't have to run nearly as hard. He got an impressive double down in Florida, didn't he? Yes, he did. Most of those doubles that he does have have come within the last four or five weeks. He didn't have many at all for the first six, seven weeks of the season. One ball, one strike. And it looks like against the left-hander, Ryan Klesko, even deeper in the box. And He's almost out of the box. He's almost in the on-deck circle. His front foot is right on the line. And his back foot is outside of the box too. So left-handed batter's box just a memory. On the ground, right to Sagi. He keeps it fair, and another ground ball out. The Braves do get a base runner. McGriff's hit the only one of the inning. He's left standing. We move to the bottom of the fourth. The Expos still lead it two to nothing. The original import. Taste German beer at its finest. Bex, America's favorite German beer. This holiday weekend, the only safe place to be is inside a theater. Independence Day. That's what I call a close encounter. Rated PG-13 at theaters now. Men, is gray hair sneaking up on you? Right under your nose? Making you look too old? Whoa, it is sneaking up on me. Up here, too. You need Just for Men gel made for the hard-to-color gray of mustaches and sideburns. Simply brush in this no-drip gel and in five minutes rinse. Gray's gone. Your mustache and sideburns blend perfectly with your natural hair color. That gray won't sneak up on me again. Just for Men gel. The sure thing for a natural look. This shop is very much different now. Ford customers told us what they wanted. We have people up on the drive that greet them as soon as they come in. Their car is written up within a few minutes, and once we get the repair order in hand, we get a pretty good idea where to go and what we're looking for. The top priority is fix it right the first time on time. Quality care standards, it must work pretty good. We get letters, cards, a handshake now and then. You know, people let us know. This is what they want. Quality care people, quality care standards. At your Ford and Lincoln Mercury dealer. We're in the bottom of the fourth inning. The Expos lead it two to nothing. Andrews to lead it off. Carmier and Grizzlanek to follow. And those of you who were waiting for our Affleck trivia answer will have it after the first hitter. There's a strike to Andrews. Singled his first time up. Scored the second run of the night. Expos with five singles. The Braves with two errors. There's strike two. No balls and two strikes. A double by Tyler Houston scored Mark Grace and Luis Gonzalez. Four runs in Chicago over Pittsburgh. Five to nothing in the top of the third. That's fouled away and it's 0-2 still. Final game of the series here tomorrow. Our friends at Sports South will have that for you. We'll go home for four against Houston before the All-Star break. On the ground, a smash to Blouser. 
He's got it. One gone. And here's our Affleck trivia question and answer. And you remember the question who holds the Expos record for the most hits by a shortstop in a season. The answer Hubie Brooks. 163 in 1985. That record's probably going to fall this year. Mark Rizalanek with his first inning single today already has 107 hits this year. The Expo pitcher Real Cormier will bat with one out. He laid down a sacrifice bunt his first time. Smokes this one into right field. The numbers say he's two for 26, but he doesn't get cheated. That will be a base hit. This ball was hit hard. Down and in. Not a bad pitch at all from Maddox. Lemke just comes up a little short. So the Expos will roll over to the top of the batting order. Mark Grizzlanek, he is single. And he's also grounded to first base. Fred McGriff with Maddox covery. First one is a strike. No balls in one strike. Tonight's the first time he will have gone to bat against Greg Maddox. He and Andrews both getting their first look at Maddox. Swing and a miss. Very, two. very aggressive hitter, Don. A little unusual for a leadoff hitter. He doesn't walk much. He has only walked 12 times all year. Usually your ideal type leadoff hitter is going to have a lot of base hits and a lot of walks and a big on base percentage. Well, he's got the big on base percentage, but not many walks contributed. Out of the same mold as a Marquise Whistle. He finds himself in a hole 0 and 2 here. Did not go around in a change. It's 1 and 2. The league only hitting 239 against Greg Maddox. His last three outings have been exceptional. Actually, his last four. And he strikes out Grizzlelanik for Maddox. That's six strikeouts. Got him to chase a pitch like this early in the count, so he went right back to it. Got him to chase it again. Three starts ago, Maddox got eight strikeouts against San Diego. He has gone above six. The last time he did that would have been on May 17th against Cincinnati. He has seven four times this year and six four times. So Maddox possibly on the way for a season high in strikeouts. Mike Lansing will greet him with two gone. He's one out of two. A single and a grounder to Lemke. In the air to left field and deep. Back goes Klusko. He's got room. And it'll stay in the ballpark for Greg Maddox. Lansing comes up a few feet short. The Expos come up empty on the scoreboard. No runs a hit, no errors, and one left. We played four. It's two to nothing Montreal. Atlanta Braves baseball brought to you by the private issue card. What's the card you design? It's a private issue. Who painted it? A titan. He's a giant in his field. Yes, and he's scoring points with me. How'd they ever guess it was me? The private issue card painted by Patrick Ewing. Call 1-800-4PI-CARD and own an original. Presenting Gillette Clear Gel Antiperspirant. A clear, clean gel that goes on smoothly with no white residue. For powerful all-day protection, Gillette Clear Gel Antiperspirant. At Sitco, when you team up our super premium gasoline with our Super Guard motor oil, you'll get all the high performance and reliability you demand. So, prepare yourself to be totally blown away. Super premium performance. Sitco says go. I can't believe I'm losing my hair back here. Like father, like son. Yeah, right. Look, if you want to regrow some hair, check this out. Rogaine? Don't you need a prescription? Not anymore. How's it work? Rogaine goes to the root of your hair and for some people gets it to grow. What have you got to lose? Nothing, I guess. Except more hair. That's been easy to use. <laughs> and it's starting to work. See, there's room for growth in every relationship. Rogaine. Medically proven to regrow hair. 
Expos leading it 2-0. We go to the top half of the fifth inning. As we mentioned earlier, six Braves going to the All-Star game this year, and one of them, John Smoltz, may be the All-Star starting pitcher for the National League. His thoughts on that? And just on, on the given past years, you know, having 14 wins, I'm probably the odds-on favorite and will be selected as it. And it'll be something that I, I definitely will treasure. Again, it's kind of like having a feather in a cap to where it'll last for just such a short time you want it to last for a lot longer. And then you go back and try to duplicate what would be a, a, another good, a good half, which that's a lot on my mind. Starting an all-star game would be great. Doing successful or however I do would be great. But, but really being consistent in the second half and helping us team, this team win another division title and go to the World Series. Yeah, that would make John Smoltz happy. It would also make the Braves his first half an exceptional one. Jermaine Dye to lead it off in the top of the fifth inning. Dye Perez and Blouser. First three due up, two to nothing Expo. Real Carmier working on a one hitter, a single by Fred McGriff in the fourth inning. The only safety off of Carmier. One and one to count. I want to wish a happy birthday to a dear friend and Braves fan, Nancy Haney in Mars Hill, North Carolina. Happy birthday. Hammered another chance for Andrews. He has been a busy boy tonight. And again, an accurate throw. One out in the fifth inning, and Eddie Perez, the hitter. And by this is a pretty good play. I don't think he was quite sure he had this one at first. Ball sharply hit. Very little reaction time for Shane Andrews. You can see that he had to look in the glove to see if it was there. It was, and he had plenty of time to throw out dive. Perez grounded back to the pitcher his first time up. He's at 316 with three homers. And rapidly gaining respect around the league for his work behind the plate. By the way, I bumped into your uncle. He wants to know, do you know where your aunt's pen is? La plume de ma tante est sur la table. Thank you. I finally had a chance to use that. It's the only French expression I remember from high school. <laughs> Two balls and no strikes to Eddie Perez. <laughs> All these years I've been waiting for it to come up, but it never has until now. Well, I will pass that on to your uncle. <laughs> Three balls and no strikes to Eddie Perez. You folks in the Atlanta area or in the southeast, don't forget on Thursday, the 4th of July, the Braves will host the Spirit of America postgame fireworks extravaganza. Still tickets available, 249-6400 in the area. Or 1-800-326-4000. Ball four to Eddie Perez. That's news. Eddie Perez. Unusual night. Jermaine Dye gets his first walk, and Eddie Perez takes one with one out here. Only the second free ticket issued by Real Cormier. Perez will stand at first for Jeff Blauser, who grounded the third his first time up. Only the third time Perez has walked all year. That number, the 800 number, 1 800 326 4000. And that is always one of the best fireworks shows in the whole Atlanta area. So come out and see the Astros. and enjoy fireworks afterwards Blouser at 245 but that batting average could be a lot lower he started off cold as ice he's done a good job with runners on base April not a good month for Jeff Blouser but as the year has progressed, he has climbed right up the ladder, and he turned June into a pretty good month, hitting 286 for the month. So Braves and Jeff Blauser will settle for incremental increases like that the rest of the year. Good curveball. Blauser this time finds himself in a hole 0 2. Pete Van Weeren, Don Sutton with you for two more outs. Pete Carey and Joe Simpson will wrap it up for you. Exciting series. You see people all around town wearing. The Expos paraphernalia and a lot of Braves hats, jackets, and T-shirts in the area. But then we've got to where we see that almost every city we go into, even north of the border here.
Perez at first, his third base on ball of the year. One gone. 0 and 2 to Blauser. A little bit inside, 1 and 2. Inside corner, call strike three. Blauser, no argument. He'll lug the timber back to the dugout. That's the third strikeout by Cormier. He's just simply making good pitches tonight. He has rarely fallen behind hitters. And he's been very aggressive when he does get ahead of somebody. No nibbling. He goes right after him. And Maddox will try to help himself with two gone. Maddox first time up, grounded back to the pitcher. Out in front of the plate. I guess it was the catcher who made the play on Maddox. A tapper out in front of the mound. Segui in to talk to his pitcher just to let him know he's going to be behind him. You don't want to come set and throw over there and all of a sudden realize your first baseman is about 10 feet behind the base runner. They're not expecting Eddie Perez to steal. Certainly not with Greg Maddox hitting. Out of play and one and one to count. We saw our buddy Ernie Johnson made it in today. He will be a part of the broadcast team doing the game tomorrow on Sports South. Inside corner, Maddox down in the count one and two. Glavin against Urbina tomorrow. Glavin eight and five. He's trying to continue his good streak. Urbina four and two. The one-two pitch to Maddox. In the air, right side. Foul territory. Segui right at the rail will run out of room. And Maddox will get another swing on the house. It's one and two. There he is. Ernie Johnson out getting some scouting in, doing some research. He's barely recovered from the Brattleboro High School reunion. They got him working already. Yeah, he said the nine hole side hill lies and <laughs> the uh, what did he have a reunion of the yeah. uh, semi pro team he used to play with 50 years ago, right? And Lois wife Lois is high school reunion. Maddox is gone. Two strikeouts in the inning for Cormier and the Braves come up empty again. No runs or hits, no errors and one left. Halfway home, it's two to nothing Expos. Pure performance. Zostrix Sports. New from Zostrix. The topical pain reliever doctors prescribe most. The purest capsaicin you can get. Zostrix Sports. Relieves joint pains, muscle aches. Don't play hurt. Zostrix Sports. Outperforms. Announcing special savings on Armor All Waterproofing Sealer. Now for only $7.99 a gallon, you can protect the wood, brick, and concrete around your house. But hurry, this Armor All Waterproofing Sealer special is for a limited time only. Some credit card companies promise you'll get a lot of mileage out of their cards. But at Discover Card, we offer something you can really use. The Cash Back Bonus Award. In fact, we've given our card members over half a billion already. And the more you use your card, the more you get back. So the next time you travel, put more than just miles under your belt. It pays to Discover, the card that pays you back. Use it where you see the notice sign. If you want a sandwich with thick slices of delicious grilled Texas toast, you have two choices. A new Texas toast bacon cheeseburger and a Texas toast breakfast sandwich. And if you want to find them, you have only one choice. Hardee's. Are you going to eat the pickle? Two to nothing Expos. We go to the bottom half of the fifth inning here at the Big O in Montreal. Real Cormier in control of things so far, and the Expos have gotten a couple of breaks. Yeah, they have. The umpiring has not been up to par, really. But then we say that an awful lot. It's easy to sound like an alibi, but 
Both runs that scored were on umpire's decisions that the replay showed were incorrect. And for Montreal, Henry Rodriguez will lead off the bottom of the fifth. He lined one off of Maddox's leg his first time up, struck out in the second. Chases a changeup, 0 and 1. Fastball to keep him honest, 1 and 1. Rodriguez with a base hit in the first inning snapped an 0 for 12 slump he was in. Tried to pull that pitch. It's one and two. Rodriguez, Alou, and Fletcher, the heart of the order. Fairly high number for him entering the fifth inning. But has not yet had a one, two, three inning. Again, he tried to pull a pitch and it bounces foul, just foul after trying to stay on the line. Made Rodriguez look bad and Maddox looked good, didn't it? Greg went over to get that ball and Rodriguez never moved. Henry must have known something that Greg didn't. A couple of errors tonight by the Braves have not figured in the scoring, but they had prolonged innings where. Greg's pitch count would not be as high as it would have been. An error by Blauser with two out in the first. An error by Lemke with two out in the third. Got him with a changeup. Tried to pull another one. Came up empty. That's seven strikeouts for Greg. That's 84 strikeouts for Rodriguez, who's having a career year, but does strike out an awful lot. A lot of guys strike out on that pitch. Yeah, they do. Came in third in the league in strikeouts behind Sosa and Galarraga. You try to pull that change up and you're asking for problems. Alou struck out his last time up but also single back in the first inning and drove in the first run of the game. Some good news for the Expos today a good medical report on Rondell White. He was allowed to start taking batting practice and expected to go on a rehab assignment the next few days. Might be back with the ball club within a week's time. He's out of grade, Georgia, isn't he? Yeah. Mm -hmm. One and two is that one's fouled off of Perez. Yeah, that racked him pretty good. Boy, say Alou. To say that he swings right down on the knob of the bat is. Not enough. He is actually off the knob of the bat. Barely has his left hand on there. You wouldn't think he'd be able to hit like that, but he has proven conclusively that he can. Yes, he can. Very strong. Two two pitch, three and two. Maddox thought he had him struck out the pitch before. Perez framed the pitch a little bit for Paul North, but it didn't work. So it's full count now. And they go right back to the changeup. Not a very good one, and a loop fouled it back. He got lucky that time, he got him up a little bit. Certainly feasting on the left handers if they can see a few more of them. Tried to pull a change up. Chipper should have him. And does by a step. Two down. That's what makes his change up effective though. Skip is his fastball is good enough. Above, certainly above average. And he spots it so well inside of the right hand hitters that they have to honor it. Then he just drops that change up down and away, and they've already committed themselves. 
Darren Fletcher struck out grounded out. Looking at the starting lineup for the Expos tonight Grizzolonic and Andrews had not faced him but everybody else in between a combined 160 average. But they've touched him for six hits tonight. Good pitch down and away. One more strike and Maddox will equal his season high in strikeouts with eight. He did that on the 17th of June against San Diego. When this good streak started out of play. Tom Glavin and Ugwith Urbina tomorrow night to wrap up the series. Got him on a pitch inside. He fouled it into the glove of Eddie Perez. He holds on for it. That's ties a season high in strikeouts. That's number eight on the night. But we go to the sixth, and the Expos are still on top, two to nothing. Wednesday night, get over the hump. With 007 and TBS, two bountiful Bond films every Wednesday night, July 10th. I thought you less stupid, Mr. Bond. The original Bond, Dr. No. Then, more Connery. Careful, guns upset me. From Russia with love. Bond Wednesdays, every Wednesday night, beginning July 10th at 805 Eastern, only on the Bond Network. You don't take orders from anyone but the sea. The harder you work, the more you earn. And the more you earn, the more you keep. And after it's all said and done, you walk away with the two things nobody can take. Good friends and good corn. Want to make painting easier? Change your roller to a Wagner cordless power roller. There's less mess, less hassle, and less bending over because you control the flow of paint. So you can just keep on rolling. In fact, with the power roller and its accessories, you'll get professional results nearly twice as fast. It even turns cleanup into an easy job. So get a cordless power roller from Wagner and transform every room in your house. Before we go to the sixth inning, a look at the Budweiser game summary. Cormier has outpitched Maddox tonight. A couple of umpiring calls hurt, but he has pitched the better game with a 2 to this point. And at the end of the inning, Maddox and the home plate umpire, Nart, had a few words together. And this is something you never see. No, and, and he knows how to go about it too. He can say something, I think, that uh, just to find out what he's got to do. As Grissom starts the inning with a drive to deep center, back goes Cliff Floyd. It's a two-to-one game as he flies one over the camera positions and straightaway center. Marquise Grissom, with his third home run against his former teammates and his second in his many nights. Good start to the sixth inning. It's a one run contest. His 12th homer of the year. I think that's the furthest I've ever seen him hit a ball. He crushed this thing. This guy doesn't allow many homers either. That's only the seventh he's allowed this season. Boy. 404 to straightaway center. And that was killed. Ball strike to Lemke. Only the second hit for the Braves. Lemke tonight. 0 for 2 with a couple of ground outs. He sends one into right field and fairly deep. Alou goes back, but he's got a beat on it and has it backpedaling to the track. 
One out. A couple of good swings to start the sixth inning. Chipper Jones is flying out, lying down. What do you think about an idea where rather than putting the manager on the spot and picking the All Star game, let the league presidents do it? They don't do anything else. <laughs> I mean, really, except suspend guys and fine guys. The manager's got enough to worry about. Bobby has admitted he's been spending too much time having to put that together the last few days. I'm sure he's glad it's behind him. No, I'm not knocking the league presidents, but let them do it. Take the heat off the manager. They have a huge input into it anyway. And our congratulations to the six Braves who made it, including Chipper Jones. Jones and Wohler's name to their first All Star team. That's great. The 0 1 pitch. Breaking ball almost hit him one and one. The only one that you that I radically disagree with was Ozzy Smith. I'd vote for Ozzy today for the Hall of Fame. But he's not even the starting shortstop on his team. How can he deprive more deserving guys on that team? How can he be allowed to deprive? I don't understand that. 1 1 pitch bounced up the middle. Grizzolonic has an easy play. Two out. I wish there was a wild card spot. You don't have to fill it. There's just a spot there for these special occasions when a guy like Ozzy is about to retire, for a guy like Dale Murphy who was on his in his last season, a George Brett, whoever the case might be, there would be a special occasion for a guy to be on the team. You don't have to keep someone else off the team. Tom Pagnazzi's had a great year. John Mabry's had a great year over there. They're deserving of going, and they are deprived because of Ozzy's presence on the team. Griff has a base hit in two trips. Takes inside one and zero. Oh. Yeah, it could be a spot you don't have to fill every mm -hmm. year. Just or make him an honorary coach or something. The way it is right now, Bobby, because he's been named to the team or chosen to the team, he's almost obligated to play him. If it were an honorary role, you wouldn't be. One and two. I just feel bad for the guys. You never know if a Mabry or a Pagnazzi is ever going to have another shot. Mm -hmm. Hopefully they will, but maybe not. Breaking ball in the dirt bounces away. Two and two to McGriff. I wish they'd let the players vote for the starters and let the fans pick the subs. Let that become the popularity. Part of the voting, or maybe they should weight it: players, managers, fans equally, one third each, or something. Try to get the best players. Got him upstairs with a high fastball. Cormier has his fifth strikeout, but the Braves are on the board thanks to a long, long home run by Marquis Grissom, his 100th hit of the year. We go to the bottom of the sixth, two to one, Montreal. As the official airline of the 1996 Olympic Games, Delta is setting the pace for business travelers with an event of its own, the Around the World Relay. It's a team event, coordinating thousands of flights a day to cities throughout the world. So you can go from one plane to another, one place to another, in record time. Delta Airlines. Crispy Wheaties and Raisins has plump raisins, sweet flakes, and an incredible crunch. I love the crunch! Linebackers. Come crunch time, there's only one. Crispy Wheaties and Raisins. 
Announcing special savings on Armorall waterproofing sealer. Now for only $7.99 a gallon, you can protect the wood, brick, and concrete around your house. But hurry, this Armorall waterproofing sealer special is for a limited time only. That sounds like a good idea to me. But tonight, the Braves are trailing it 2-1 to one to the Expos. And for Montreal in the sixth, it'll be Segui, Floyd, and Andrews against Maddox. Greg had his first 1 2 3 inning in the fifth. And he has tied his season high with eight strikeouts already. Segui, a flare into left center, but it's tailing back to Ryan Klesko, who makes the catch. One pitch, one out. Boy, some tough luck for the Reds today. They lost Hal Morris, hit with a bat. Broken bat when Derek Davis was hitting. Pete Shurik has had to go back on the disabled list. Willie Green, who really starting to come for him, has also gone on the disabled list. Mike Kelly back in the major leagues. Recalled. Eric Anthony off the list. Up the middle for Cliff Floyd. Backhanded by Lemke and a nice throw. Didn't get him. Mark had to catch the ball and throw it all in one motion, and Cliff Floyd gets down the line quite well. It'll be an infield hit. And Bonet got this one right. <laughs> Good play by the Limmer. But Floyd beat the ref. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be so, so sure that Bonet didn't just get surprised the first inning. Such a weird play. Yeah, well. <laughs> Maybe so. Shane Andrews is singled in two trips. Knocked down by Chipper Jones, but can't hang on to it. That may have saved a double. Two on, one out for the pitcher. Maybe he gets a double play on regular turf here. He did well, just as Joe said, to deflect the ball. It would have been a double down the line had he not gotten leather on it. Cormier got a base hit his last time, so he's proven he's no joke up there. Yeah, he hit, his ball, hit the ball sharply for his third hit of the year. And also put down a good sacrifice bunt in the second inning. Jerry Manuel going over some thoughts with him about this situation. One of the things they don't want him to do is if he is bunting, bunt into a force out at third base if the Braves put the wheel play on. We got an out and two hits, and only three pitches have been thrown in the inning. Let's see how Felipe Alou plays this one. He's got a two to one lead. He is bunning, but the pitch is inside. The Braves were playing it straight up. How about this? How about playing it straight up? Let the pitcher cover the third base line. But throw the pitch so slow up there that it gives you time to really get in on top of the guy. It's great unless he swings. <laughs> Pushes it to third. Maddox has to turn and fire to first and just got him. Two out. Good bunt by Cormier on the turf. Runners in scoring position for Gozalanik. Everybody does well here. A great bunt by Cormier. A good play by Maddox. Watch him bounce off that mound. And he takes a look at third, knows the bunt is too good, and goes right. That's a bang bang play at first. Grizzolanik singled his first time up, first time he had faced Maddox. Came around to score the first run of the game. 0 for 2 cents with a comebacker and a strikeout. Down in the dirt for ball one. This is a guy that. He's a leadoff batter, doesn't walk much. Only 12 walks this year. 332 at bats. That's going to drive in a run, maybe two. Here comes the throw. Andrews trying to score. He is safe at the plate. Eddie Perez thought he had him. Grizzolanik winds up at second, and here comes Bobby Cox.
The throw was a little bit up the first base line, and I, that's exaggerating it a little bit. It was near enough to plate. Perez thought he had the plate blocked, came back with the tag. Grizzolanek comes through with a two-run single. It's four to one. He had a pretty good pitch, too, a breaking ball down, and he hit the daylights out of it. Let's see if we can tell. I tell you, Eddie Perez tagged the bent leg on the slide, and I'm not sure that the straight, the front foot, got the plate. I don't know how he can tell from over there anyway. I think he I think he was in there. If his right foot got the plate, the tag came in behind the right foot. Boy. Oh boy. That's a bang banger. Yeah. Either side would argued on that one. It's almost like Andrews front foot went over the glove and then came down on the plate as the glove was tagging the back foot. Lansing has a chance now to drive in a run. Oh and one he did drive in a run with a two out single in the second. For Grizzolanek is 29th and 30th RBIs of the year. Eight strikeouts, nine hits, schizophrenic game for Maddox. Tapper in front of the plate. Maddox will have to bare hand in hurry. Can't get it down there. He throws it away, and Grizzolanek scores. A swinging bunt hit. I think Eddie Perez was pointing to first, but he probably should have told Greg Maddox, just yeah. forget it. Maddox very angry with himself as soon as he threw that ball he knew he should never have done it he had no chance to get the runner. Another good pitch. You He's, see Eddie there pointing to first. He stopped pointing but by then it was too late I think. It's a hit in the air and. Things looking a little bleak. Five to one. That is a hit and an error. Air charge to the gold glover Maddox. His first error of the year. Braves cut it to one. Expos came right back here in the six with three and they have another runner at first base. Last night the Braves did a good job of keeping the top guys in the order off the sacks. Tonight, Grizzolanek and Lansing, four for eight with three RBIs and two runs scored. A one hopper to McGriff and Rodriguez will be handled here. Inning over. Three runs, four hits, one left. We've played six. Braves need a rally. They're down by four. At Sitco, when you team up our super premium gasoline with our Super Guard motor oil, you'll get all the high performance and reliability you demand. So, prepare yourself to be totally blown away. Super premium performance. Sitco says go. There's no track in the world that's tougher on brakes than the one in Martinsville, Virginia. And when drivers take the green flag here, they all have one thing in common, the same brand of brakes. Because without them, you can't come down this straightaway at 120 miles an hour and still make it through the turn. So which brand do the top drivers use to get them through 500 laps at Martinsville? Performance Friction Carbon Metallic. And we stock them at AutoZone. I, I knew Advil was good, but this good? I was just in the dentist chair. Big time pain. What does my doctor recommend? Not the prescription pain reliever you'd expect, but Advil. Come on, doc. Advil works better than a prescription. You know, it did. Advil's that good. On tough dental pain, two Advil work better than any two extra strength Tylenol. Even better than two tablets of Tylenol with codeine. Advil just works better. Advil, advanced medicine for pain. 
Five to one Montreal now as we've completed six innings of play here at the Big O and Felipe Alou making a defensive change. He's going to put F.P. Santangelo in center field. That moved Cliff Floyd over to right. Henry Rodriguez comes out of the ball game. And we go to the seventh. Five to one. Expos on top. And Ryan Plesko leads it on for Atlanta. Plesko, Dye, and Perez the first three. Ryan has struck out and bounced up. Breaking ball inside, one ball, no strike. So from right to left in the outfield. Yeah, I think I said Floyd went to right. He's actually in left field. There we go. The pitch. Pop foul back. One and one, the count. Joe's been very upset. They have a little automobile race between innings on the scoreboard here, and I've defeated he and Dave Baker two days in a row, and he's sulking. Pick the best cars every time. Brad Clance in our bullpen. And another grounder to first. Sagi goes to his knees, but whoa, he dropped the ball, and everybody's safe. The rhythm of that play was destroyed by the first baseman. We'll see who the air is on, probably the pitcher. Yes, Sagi couldn't get to his feet. He tried to, but stumbled a little bit here. So he just stayed on his knees. High throw and Cormier had to reach up for it, look down at the bag at the same time and didn't catch it cleanly. Tim Scott goes to work in their bullpen. And we're lucky both sides are lucky no injury here. That's where you can step on a guy's Achilles inadvertently when he's got his back to you in the baseline. The air is on the pitcher. Well, let's get going here. Jermaine Dye, the batter. Fouls it away on one. You know the old saying, from little acorns, mighty oak trees grow. I've heard that. So maybe that air is the start of something. Acorns and car races. Tough double threat. <laughs> one and one the count. Well, if Tony Gwynn can't play in the All-Star game because of his Achilles, I wonder if Bobby has to pick another Padre. I would think not. I mean, I don't know what the rules are. I'm going to disagree. I know you won the car race and everything, but I'm going to disagree. You think he does have to get yeah. a Padre? Mm -hmm. If each team has to be represented to the extent that you've got to go out and get some guys that don't even really deserve to be there from some teams just to have each club represented then if one of the one man representatives is injured then the guy that was voted in it I think you'd have to replace somebody from the Padres. Chopper toward third but foul two and two. And the good thing about that would be that there are several members of the San Diego Padres that are worthy of consideration. Joey Hamilton, who has had a great year on the mound. Steve Finley's had a terrific year. He's already, I think, equaled or near equal his home run total, his career high in home runs. After a horrible start, remember how bad mm -hmm. he was going when we were first out there? Mm -hmm. Two two pitch to Jermaine double play ball maybe if it's hit hard enough takes it himself good arm two down six three double play six unassisted at second six three on die at first two down and Eddie Perez comes to the plate Lansing just had to find a place to hide get out of the way so he didn't get hit by the throw so that air does no harm to the. Montreal team. And that should end the inning. Alou in right field waits. Inning over. No hits, no runs, and air, nobody left. Bottom of the seventh. All Montreal now, it's five to one. You 
and I have a lot in common. I look at you, I see myself. Pay too much for auto supplies and you'll feel like one too. <laughs> at Pep Boys, a Delta Diamond Truck Toolbox is $199.99. Pep Boys, everything but gas. Anyone can become sick or injured, and major medical doesn't cover lots of important expenses that affect your family, outside, and inside your home. Things that can affect your kids. Aflac can help. Use Aflac benefits to fill the gaps other insurance doesn't cover. You decide exactly how to use it best. Then, concentrate on what's really important. Just get better. The original import. Taste German beer at its finest. Bex, America's favorite German beer. I could have sent the money, Western Everybody Union. Did you really need the money today? Just tell me. If you told me you needed the money really fast, I would have sent it. Western if you didn't send the money, Western Union, tell me these things anyway, what's did you really send money? the money? Just tell them to wait. Western Union, the fastest way to send money worldwide. No, I didn't send the money, Western Union, but I figured, what's the difference? Six of one. If you didn't send the money, Western Union, did you really send the money? Sorry it didn't get there, but I wouldn't worry. Western Union, the fastest way to send money worldwide. We go to the seventh inning here, and... I say a little, little lead it off. Part of the seventh, I should say. He corks one into center. Marquise drifts back. And puts it away for out number one. Greg Maddox has pitched on. This is almost certainly his last inning. He's due up second in the Atlanta eighth. Darren Fletcher, the batter. And I should have known better. I should have known better than to disagree with you on a night when you're on a roll. <laughs> I just got lucky. They don't have to select another Padre. But the National League, in conjunction with Bobby Cox, will make that determination. My thanks to Mr. Clements in the National League office for responding to our question. Getting back on the phone, I got a couple more for it. <laughs> Solid hit for Fletcher. Runner at first, one out. And David Segui is the batter. It's the 11th hit. Greg Maddox is allowed tonight, and it Ties the most he allowed in a game this year, and that was to Colorado on that miserable day at Coors Field back on June 7th. David Segui has really turned into a good hitter, Happy. He sort of came out of nowhere. Baltimore had him, the Mets had him, and he's headed for stardom up here. Clance again goes to work in the bullpen along with Pedro Bourbon. Middle low, one ball, no strikes. Doesn't strike out a lot, only 33 this year in 270 plate appearances. Pretty good contact hitter, both sides of the plate. So let me get this straight. We lose two out of three in Florida and then come in here with Steve Avery, who had given up 44 hits in his last 25 innings and goodness knows how many runs. And he wins easily. And now you go with the hottest pitcher in baseball, Maddox, in his last 23 innings coming in, nine hits, one run, one walk, 17 strikeouts, and he gives up 11 hits and five runs. And is losing by four. That's what makes it a great game. Yeah. No script. You look at things like that on paper and you just wonder how in the world is, does it turn out that way? John Smoltz pitching against. The Marlins. Pat Rapp, who has lost seven in a row. Pat Rapp had been struggling, and he wins. If you're a youngster and you're thinking about starting gambling, let this be a lesson <laughs> for you. Don't do it. Unless you're about to get married, that's about the ultimate gambler. <laughs> One and two, the count. Line to the mound out there. And out there, they've been hitting line drives up the middle all day, and Greg handled that one, and the inning is over. 
So the Braves get a double play of their own. One hit, no runs, no errors, nobody left. Seven innings have gone by. Montreal leads it five to one. Congratulations to Lowe's on your 50th anniversary. I have always been impressed with the excellent quality and selection at Lowe's. I have bought power tools, lawn mowers, light fixtures, a TV set, a washing machine, etc. And I've never had any trouble with any of it. Come to think of it, I also met my husband at Lowe's. Wish I could say the same thing about him. Just kidding. Ha ha. Lowe's knows home improvement. We've known it for 50 years. Make your presence felt. Back at the office. Hitachi introduces mobilized computing. Remote control. With Intel Pentium processor. When should you use Arutus KT, the potent medicine for pain? Not for little aches, but when the pain gets tough. I was getting these headaches. So my doctor told me to try a Rudis KT. You'd have to take a thousand milligrams of Tylenol to get the same relief of just 25 milligrams of potent Arutus KT. I don't take it for every headache, but some headaches. For those times when you're really in pain, now there's a choice. Arutus KT, the potent medicine for pain. Delta Airlines scoreboard coming your way here as we go to the eighth. Barry Bonds hit a home run today as the Giants have now won two in a row. Morandini a homer for the Phillies. Lance Johnson for the Mets. Gomez has hit his 13th home run tonight. Cincinnati leading St. Louis. Houston over Florida. In the American League, Kenny Lofton has homered for Cleveland. Bob Higginson has hit his 12th for Detroit. Bonilla and Palmero both homered for Baltimore. Williams has homered his 16th of the year for the Yankees. Tartable his 10th for the White Sox. And we go to the... Eighth inning, Jeff Blauser leads it off and hits another one to Shane Andrews. We better try somebody else. He's had a lot of action tonight, and they've all been outs. One away, and Mike Mordecai will pinch hit here for Greg Maddox. Cormier threw seven innings, 87 pitches. Maddox threw seven innings, 97. Cormier, 34 balls, 54 strikes. Maddox, 22 balls, 75 strikes. Strike called outside corner 0 1 1. Marty hitting 250 for the year. 11 out of 44 a couple of doubles he's driven in a run. A little bit low. For me it throws across his body a little bit creates a little movement on his pitches that's been instrumental tonight in getting a lot of ground ball outs. One and one the count. Ball gets loose in the Atlanta bullpen. Maddox seven innings 11 hits eight strikeouts five runs. Five eleven and one for Montreal hot shot but right at Lansing. Two out. The way it's gonna it's going, we're gonna be out of here at a depressingly early hour. Here's Marquise Grissom, whose long home run has been our attack. If this stays the way it is. Again, it will be a three-game margin in the rubber game of the series tomorrow night. Whether it's a rubber game or not, Sports South will have it for you with Ernie Johnson and Tim Brando. Is it Tim or is it Ernie Jr.? I can never keep up. Well, tune in and find out. We don't know. Fly ball, short right. Alou, a long run. He's low. He lets it drop. You forget that a guy will retreat on this artificial turf to make sure it doesn't go over his head. And he did the right thing with two out in the inning and a four run lead. Why give him a potential inside the park home run? Joe Kerrigan on his way to the mound to talk things over with 
Cormier who has been brilliant here tonight. This is his second best game of the year. He threw a three hit shutout at the Cardinals back in April. And I'm sure that was an outstanding effort but I bet he didn't pitch any better than he did tonight. Isn't it neat now the way the players and coaches cover their mouths so TV can't snoop because they're afraid guys are in the <laughs> clubhouse. Really? Uh -huh. Yeah, Braves in the clubhouse doing whatever and checking out what you say and reports it to the bench. It's getting more like the CIA every day around here. Mark Lemke will be the batter. Lemke 0 for 3 tonight 0 for 8 in the series and his average has tumbled from the 300 mark down to 281 in the last few days. Their bullpen is busy once more. Omar Dahl is the left hander for the first runner back. And Tim Scott is the right hand. And Marquise Grissom on his way to his second 100 hits. That was his goal at the beginning of the year. He's right on target, isn't he? One ball, no strikes. Bad night for the Braves. 5 11 and 1 for Montreal. 1 3 and 3 for Atlanta. Last time they made three errors in a game was early June against the Mets. Not going to alibi, but a lot of people say, I know Bobby Cox feels this way, that when you have a rough night like the Braves did with that flight, it doesn't get you the first day as much as it does the second. I don't know mm -hmm. if that's true or not. You got to give Cormier all the credit in the world, but we have not played well. Down and in. It's a good at bat by Mark. Ball one. I don't think he was swinging on the second pitch on a close pitch. He took it for ball two, and he definitely was not swinging there 2 and 0. He's trying to get on base. Set up something maybe for Chipper or Fred. 3 and 1. He might take another one. Let's yeah, see. Might. Jimmy Williams runs through the signs at third. And it wouldn't be a bad idea. Now Mel Rojas heads down to their bullpen and Scott will sit down. They walked him. Braves have a two out chance here. A blue pit and a walk. Three walks now for Cormier. And that was his 99th pitch of the game, so he shouldn't be out of gas, but he's going to get the hook here. And the left hander, Omar Dahl, will come in and listen to the hand that the Canadian native gets as he leaves the field and Dow comes on a lot of people on their feet here. It's a great shot in the arm to this franchise to have a native born Canadian pitch like this back in a moment. on the west and east coast don't know anything about real barbecue. You have to come to Kansas City to get real barbecue. Good barbecue should be messy, yes. Even the names make you hungry for barbecue. Ooh. I barbecue about two or three times a week. My barbecue is just as good or better than any restaurant in Kansas City because I make it. Good ribs. Good ribs. Can I get that to go, please? <laughs> The Krylon Touch means making the old look new. The Krylon Touch and the boring becomes beautiful. Show your true colors. Don't just paint. Give it the Krylon Touch. Only with Krylon. This holiday weekend, the only safe place to be is inside a theater. Independence Day. That's what I call a close encounter. Rated PG-13 at theaters now. Cormier went seven and two thirds innings. He also got a curtain call here. Three hits, no runs to this point. The runners on base, his responsibility. Three walks, five strikeouts, a homer. Dahl pitched two innings here last night. Walking one, striking out two, and allowing nothing. Chipper Jones 0 for 3. You know, an interesting move here, too, by Felipe Lou. 
he admits that sometimes he does things just by feel, whatever his instincts tell him. He did that the other day in that pinch hit appearance by Cliff Floyd when he hit the three run homer. He had Henry Rodriguez on the bench, who's hit 25 homers yeah. on the year, but Floyd's the guy that he put up there and he won the ball game for him. Well, here he had a lefty and a righty to choose from. He's had a left hander already in the game, so Chipper's had three at bats right handed, yet he stays with Omar Dahl, and maybe it's because most of Chipper's damage this year has come from the left side of the plate. 12 of his 15 home runs. Pedro Borbon is going to be the next Atlanta pit pitcher, and Mel Rojas is now getting ready and is about ready to go for them. Rojas is Felipe's nephew. Breaking ball a little bit inside. One ball, no strikes. I need a long one here to get back into it. Sorry, that, that's the situation chipper. A lot of times when a pitcher comes in, he'll swing at the first pitch. But he didn't get a one close enough to even offer it there. Two and oh. Fred McGriff waits on deck. Dahl was with the Dodgers last year. Like the Braves' lead of yesterday, they had a five-to-one lead in the bottom of the seventh inning, but you weren't 100% comfortable with it Not until the Braves added to the lead late. And that'll make you a little more comfortable, though. I'm afraid. Getting over. So Dahl comes in and does the job. One hit, no runs, no errors, two left. Bottom half of the eighth inning. Pedro Borbon on for Atlanta, but the Braves trail five-to-one. Atlanta Braves baseball brought to you by Sitco. Just get up and go. Sitco says go. And by AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. At Sitco, when you team up our super premium gasoline with our Super Guard motor oil, you'll get all the high performance and reliability you demand. So, prepare yourself to be totally blown away. Super premium performance. Sitco says go. To get the most out of this IndyCar, Patrick Racing put Scott Pruitt behind the wheel. They built a team that could get it in and out of the pits in the blink of an eye. And they chose a battery they can depend on to get it started. The Duralast battery from AutoZone. The same Duralast you can depend on to start your car. So don't settle for anything less. The Duralast battery. Power you can depend on. Bex, the original import. Taste German beer at its finest. Bex, America's favorite German beer. Who painted it? A titan. He's a giant in his field. Yes, and he's scoring points with me. How'd they ever guess it was me? The private issue card painted by Patrick Ewing. Call 1-800-4PI-CARD and own an original. Here's what's on deck brought to you by Armor All. One more game here in Montreal. That'll be on Sports South tomorrow. Ernie Johnson Sr. and we believe Tim Brando for the ball game. Then back home for a long four-game set with the Houston Astros before the All-Star break. We'll have all the action for you right here on TBS. Pedro Borbon on the pitch as we go to the bottom of the eighth. Cliff Floyd is the batter and the count is 0-1. Cormier's final line, seven and two-thirds, three hits, three walks, five strikeouts, no runs, a homer. Floyd is one for three, that against Maddox. Ground ball fouled on the first base line. One run. I think I said none. Silly me. See, Joe, I'm not right all the time. <laughs> I don't want to break your spirit. That's why I said that. I know. What a great pitching matchup on Thursday, huh? Braves come home. It'll be John Smoltz against Shane Reynolds. Smoltz looking to snap a two-game losing streak. Shane Reynolds nine and five on the year. Tell you what, Smoltz is one thing different about him. He's gotten his clock cleaned his last two times out. 
I mean, it wasn't that he moped in the past, but he'd really get down on himself and be like Joe Gritz flick with a black cloud over his head. He's worried. He's not that way anymore. He's confident he can bang right on him. One, two on the screen. They have Le Oeuvre here, which is French for the wave. Maybe. <laughs> I sure hope so. <laughs> God knows what I just said. <laughs> One and two, the cut. High fly ball, center field. Gets him. Comes in a couple of steps, puts it away. One up. Okay. Saturday, or is it Saturday? Yeah, Saturday. That kid Mike Hampton goes for the Astros. It'll be our first chance to see him. He's supposed to be a good looking young left handed prospect. Well, we saw him once. He stuck yeah, the bats. That's right. Right in our ears down there in the Astro. In the ninth, it'll be McGriff, Pusco, and Dye. Okay, Chuck, how do you say the way of in front? I pop coming back and out of play. Andrews two out of three with a couple of runs scored. I don't know what that had. I don't know if it hit the glove or the mask. Sherman Obando is on deck. <laughs> He'll pinch it next. Whatever it was, Eddie doesn't want it to happen again. The wave in French is almost what I said. It's La Vague. Okay. You have to remember that. So we can talk about it at home. Mm -hmm. It comes to La Vague. Maybe not. We'll see. One and one the count. Breaking ball right in there. It's one and two. They're vogging up a storm here. <laughs> Missed low and away. Two and two. Rojas will come in and try to finish this thing. Or so it would appear with Obando on deck. Gene Andrews thriving, getting to play every day instead of splitting time with Sean Barry. Andrews out on straight. That deal helped both guys, but now uh -huh. Barry gets to play every day in Houston. That's right. Two out, no Bondo, the former Baltimore performer, comes to the plate. He came over in the Tarasco deal, didn't he? Yeah, he did. And now the Orioles are wondering just how much the Expos knew about the shoulder injury to Tony Tarasco that's required mm -hmm. surgery. As if to say if you knew his shoulder was hurt that that much then it could void the deal. Obando hitting 252 five homers 16 RBIs as a part time player takes the strength. McGriff. Leads things off in the ninth for Atlanta. Alou could have let his pitcher hit for himself here and let Dow pitch to the left hand hitters to start Atlanta off. In fact, I'm surprised he didn't do mm -hmm. that. But he knows a lot more about his team than we do. More than I do. I don't want to offend you. No, oh, you're on a roll tonight, buddy. You're the guy. Tough play for Chipper. Got him, and the inning is over. Bourbon does his job in one, two, three fashion. We go to the ninth. Last chance for Atlanta. Braves trail it five to one. All champions. All Americans. All with a story to tell. America's Greatest Olympians, a TBS original. 1035 Eastern, Thursday night, exclusively on TBS. The quest begins this August on TBS.
scarier than a cheap fan. What a Hunter fan with its whisper quiet motor and sturdy wobble free design is a sure sign of intelligent life. We go to the ninth inning. Fred McGriff will lead it off. By the way if you can't get Sports South and if you can't pick up the Braves far flung radio network the game will also be on some places on ESPN. I don't know exactly where tomorrow. You may have heard of that network. That's the one where all the all the sports shows they they don't talk about sports anymore. They just try to out cute one another. <laughs> oh boy! And away we go. McGriff go. one for three. The other baseball: Florida and Houston three three after six. Cincinnati two nothing over St. Louis after five and a half. There's that split finger. He's got a great one. Chicago thirteen nothing over Pittsburgh after six. Phillies three two after seven and a half over New York. Giants beat Colorado five one today. Zero oh and two. American League. Kansas City and Cleveland two two after eight. Baltimore seven two over Toronto after six and a half. Milwaukee Detroit one one in the ninth. The game now in New York. Yankees 4-3 over Boston. McGriff out on strikes. Three pitches. Chicago 4-1 after five and a half over Minnesota. Texas at California. Oakland at Seattle later. Three outstanding pitches to start the inning. Rojas 11 out of 14 in saves this year, but a rough ERA here at home. So that was a good start. He is two and two with a 6.27 ERA here in this ballpark. He's one of those guys that one day will look absolutely sensational and the next day base hits fly all over the place. He gets them out more often than not but when he when he doesn't have that splitter work and he gets lit up pretty good. Yeah he has to keep the ball down. Well, Let's go for three tonight. I'm sorry he does have a good fastball to go with it. There you it saw is. it there. He's thrown five pitches and they've all been in the zone. Two out. Jermaine Dye, our last hope. He's gotten him on six pitches. Ryan thought that ball hit the dirt before he caught it. But Fletcher was able to pick it before it hit the dirt. Let up a little bit high to Jermaine. Die is 0 for 2. That's news in itself. He's also walked. Some days the other guys are just better than your guys and this is one of those days. Some days the brakes go yeah. the other way. One and two. Braves will have Glavin tomorrow. The Expos will have their young right hander Urbina on the mound. The crowd on their feet here. They love seeing this. He struck out the side and the ball game is over. Great job by Rojas and the series is even. Braves win 7-2. Then the Expos win by a final score of 5-1. And our AutoZone player of the game is starting pitcher Real Cormier. 
who pitched seven and two thirds innings of great baseball tonight gave up only one run on the home run by Marquise Grissom leading off the sixth three hits he walked three struck out five congratulations to Real Cormier we'll be back to wrap things up at the big O right after this. You may have made a difference in someone's life. We can't tell you their name or anything about them. We can tell you that by using or being a designated driver like 80 million other Americans, you've made a very real contribution. You see, drunk driving fatalities declined by 37% in the last 12 years. We salute America's designated drivers and we urge everyone to join you. By doing what's right, you're making things better. A message from Budweiser. There's no track in the world that's tougher on brakes than the one in Martinsville, Virginia. And when drivers take the green flag here, they all have one thing in common, the same brand of brakes. Because without them, you can't come down this straightaway at 120 miles an hour and still make it through the turn. So which brand do the top drivers use to get them through 500 laps at Martinsville? Performance Friction Carbon Metallic. And we stock them at AutoZone. As the official airline of the 1996 Olympic Games, Delta has created an event just for business travelers, the International Dash. With 4,900 daily flights to 300 cities, we'll fly you to the business world with a schedule that's as full as yours. And we don't do it so we can finish first. We do it so you can. Delta Airlines. Problems started here in the bedroom. Typical, I'm told, but we never thought it could happen to us. We were so happy. Just a couple of dumb kids in love. But then it all started to fall apart. We tried everything to make it work. With the light on, the light off, slower, faster. Hey, we even tried motor oil. There's nothing funny about a cheap fan. But a Hunter fan with its whisper-quiet motor and sturdy wobble-free design will never let you down. Announcing special savings on Armor All Waterproofing Sealer. Now for only $7.99 a gallon, you can protect the wood, brick, and concrete around your house. But hurry, this Armor All Waterproofing Sealer special is for a limited time only. Beck's, the original import, tastes German beer at its finest. Beck's, America's favorite German beer. This holiday weekend, the only safe place to be is inside a theater. Independence Day. That's what I call a close encounter. Rated PG-13 at theaters now. Who painted it? A titan. He's a giant in his field. Yes, and he's scoring points with me. How'd they ever guess it was me? The private issue card painted by Patrick Ewing. Call 1-800-4PI-CARD and own an original. Atlanta Braves Baseball, brought to you by Delta Airlines, bringing the world to Atlanta as the official airline of the 1996 Centennial Olympic Games. You'll love the way we fly. And by Aflac. Aflac covers the unexpected cost of getting well. Aflac, insuring over 38 million people worldwide. Greg Maddox has his three game winning streak snapped tonight as the Montreal Expos behind Real Cormier even the series at one game apiece and cut the lead in the East down to three games. You see the line score there the Expos stranded eight Atlanta stranded five twenty thousand and seventy five here tonight a little bit smaller crowd in fact quite a bit smaller than yesterday's Canada Day affair where thirty two thousand folks showed up but a quick game two hours and seventeen minutes. Okay, Joe, and the next Braves telecast tomorrow at 7.30 on Sports South. We'll be back with you Thursday at 7.35 against Houston from our stadium. Coming up next this week in baseball, followed at 10.30 by the TBS Prime movie, John Wayne stars in the Sons of Katie Elder. Yeah, that's a beauty. Oh, good. Um, all right, who is Katie Elder? Katie Elder was the mother of John Wayne. I know, Wayne but who, brother. who played her? She, was, she passed away. She was really not in the movie. Oh, I see. Well, be that as it may, for Joe Simpson, Don Sutton, Pete Van Weer, and Skip Carey from the ballpark in Montreal. So long, everybody.
leading sports television into the 21st century, this has been an exclusive presentation of Turner Sports. <laughs>